We're live. Okay, I'm not doing the hands. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it this okay, time. Okay, good. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. It is yet again Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, so we are here doing book chats with mostly books. I'm Jody. I'm Jen. And tonight we are talking about Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. Kwan, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I spaced on that. I don't. I do that too with titles. I'm like, uh, you know, the one we read for today, that right? book. <laughs> and for some reason, I always mess it up when we're filming because I don't know. I've, evidently, yeah. I'm nervous. Or something. You switch letters sometimes. It's okay. I really do. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, why don't you jump in and give us a brief synopsis? Okay, so the book is kind of split between two time periods. So first we start off with um, Lucy. She's 19. She's going to her very rich friend's wedding on the island of Capri. Lucy is also rich. Everyone in this book is rich. Um, and Lucy is Chinese American and she's going to her friend's wedding and deals with just a ton of microaggressions and like more blatant racism. And there's this boy, George, at the wedding. Um, he's Issy's cousin, I think. I think he's actually related to Issy. Issy yes. Yeah. Issy's more of like a big sister babysitter to um, Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. So her and she's like, they're attracted to each other, but Lucy is like, eh, I don't like him. He's too pretty. I don't trust him. <laughs> um, then they have a thing, and Charlotte finds them. Charlotte is Lucy's older cousin who acts like her babysitter. Mm, we'll come back to that. Yeah, and breaks them off, and it's kind of like a disastrous ending. So then we jump five years into the future. We're in New York. Lucy is engaged to the boring white bread Cecil Pike. I'm going to have a lot of thoughts about Cecil. Um, and they're getting married soon. And he, she's going to be like social elite even more than she already is. And we just, and then she reconnects with George. Um, so it's, L Lucy has to untangle her feelings. She has to untangle her feelings about her race and... It's a whole thing. It's a thing. It's a whole thing. <laughs> I think it's safe to say this book we both thought was going to be much different than it, yeah. than it actually was. Yeah. It was a lot more intense. Uh huh. It was not the fun rom com that I necessarily thought we were headed to get. Yeah, because you're like, oh, it's a pastel cover. It's bright. It's pink. Yep. <laughs> I did say all those things. <laughs> <laughs> there are some elements of rom-com in the book, but mm -hmm. I don't feel like that was the focus of this book. Oh, no. Um, and we did get our, our a good ending. Mm -hmm. um, so there was that. But yeah. there was a lot of other things to work through with Lucy yeah, the that was unexpected. Yeah, the focus isn't the romance. And, not, and like, we were talking about this earlier, the book is like 95% vanity and like 5% sex. If you want to go with, like, mm -hmm. what the title is telling you about. Because mm -hmm. I was, like, over halfway through it, and I'm like, sex and vanity? Even, I, did the, I did the exact same thing. I was like, I get the vanity. <laughs> like, that's very clear. Um, On so many different levels, yes. Um, okay, I say let's start with characters mm -hmm. and writing, and we'll go from there. Or you want, do you want to do overall impression of the book first? Sure, what's your overall impression? This was an extremely difficult book for me to read. <laughs> Yeah, um, I get, I, I could get that. <laughs> yeah. In, like, different ways. Like, the first half when Lucy is, like, hearing all of these comments about, like, oh, where are you from? But really. Or are, what kind of Asian are you? Or this and that. Like, just, it's, like, a different painful than when she's dealing with it. Then it just got very sad. Mm -hmm. So not a fun read for me <laughs> this is not the escapist read i had hoped we'd be doing <laughs> yes um what, what did you think because i had I very personal baggage with this book sort of struggled with this book as well um for you know the characters are all very shallow which i expected and sometimes i can totally be okay with that as mm -hmm. long as other things about the book redeem themselves and not to say this was a bad book, I just think I went in with really different expectations, and there was a, a lot more of race issues, which I expected, but it's it's a lot more than I expected still. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not, it's like I've 
like we've read books where there is like casual racism mentioned and it's not dealt with or framed in a way to make you think that the book isn't like just this is just a bias of the book and maybe even of the author but you can't tell that so it's like framed in a way that we shouldn't like these crazy white people crazy bitch white people and that they we know they're wrong it's still very painful to read though well and there were so many different different layers Mm -hmm. of racism too and it wasn't just white it was it was across the board everybody had some to an extent except lucy well even she internalized all of hers (laughs) she internalized all of her and george let's start with characters let's start with characters (laughs) Uh, what do you think of Lucy? <laughs> I, would, I would die for Lucy Tang Churchill. Like, I would, I loved her. Like, I did, too. From the beginning, like, just seeing what she goes through and how she grows up, how she, mm-hmm. deal, how she deals with it sometimes. I'm like, oh, girl, no, please love yourself. And she gets there eventually. She does. She makes some interesting choices. There was one moment where I was like, what? Why him? <laughs> <laughs> it was mostly why him. <laughs> I see why, but oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think of George? I like George, too. And, like, I don't think we got as much of him as mm-hmm. I wanted because he's, this book is not about George. And this book isn't about their romance. It's so, like, I get why there's not as much of him as, like, there may, I maybe wanted it to be. But then again, it would have been a very different book if it had yeah. more of him. Yeah, I think that would have been our rom-com. And I don't think Mm -hmm. this was ever even supposed to be a rom-com. I think that because of the blurbs on the back, you're misled to think it's going to be that. But Mm -hmm. even with the title, Sex and Vanity, it's not a (laughs) rom-com. Like, you should get that, I guess. Yeah, and, like, looking at it now. Yeah, right? I know. the cover's a little darker than maybe something lighthearted and fun would have Although the pool scene, I don't know. Maybe that wasn't a good movie That didn't happen in the book. Yeah, I don't know where this is supposed to to be in her (laughs) building, maybe. I don't remember ever going up to a rooftop terrace pool. Yeah. Um, I, too, love George. I would have liked a lot more from him. He was such a quiet guy, but every time he he said something, he really meant everything he said. Yeah, and and he was honest and... Even when, like, Lucy was like, you're just lying to me. And then it turns out, like, no, he, that was the entire truth. <laughs> yeah, he really was genuine. <laughs> he and his mom speak Cantonese to each other, which I really liked. Mm-hmm. I loved him and his mom. I loved yeah. his mom. Let's talk about his mom. <laughs> oh, Rosemary. Yes, I adored her. I know she was not everyone's favorite because she's very eccentric. She's just she... eccentric and effusive and, like, very friendly and bubbly and... And Some of them are overwhelmed by that. They're like, mm, yeah. she's, like, what? flaunting her money as if you guys aren't sitting here in Pearls and Chanel. Mm-hmm. Um, and they never understood that her, like, generosity was so, was was truly just generosity. There were no strings because they yeah. all worked in a world of strings and attachments when they offered something. And hers was just pure, no, let me give you guys this room. And I don't need this were, room. And they also were, very dismissive that there are cultural differences between them and her. Mm-hmm. And that was very clear. <laughs> yes. Um, even with the other Asian characters, the, it was the yeah. Hong Kong rich yeah. they didn't approve of. It's just like, mm. Yeah, but I adored her. I, I, did too. I think she was one of my favorite characters, to be honest. <laughs> I love the moms. Like, uh, the Rosemary mom. is uh, George's mom, and then Marion is Lucy and, her bro- and Freddie's mom. I also adored Marion. I liked Marion as well. Um, I didn't love Renee Cecil's mom. She yeah. had moments. She has moments, but also she's very briefly, like, briefly seen. In the yes, book. and she may have been great, except that because we're hearing all of this with her and Cecil, too, I'm kind of was already a little jaded because yeah. he... He's a tool. Let's just flat out say that. Can He's we? a tool in many worse <laughs> words that we were not say on camera. Um, so needless to say, Cecil is not our favorite character I in mean, this like, book. When I first read his name, I'm like, oh, he's named after one of the most notorious racists of all time. Like, yeah, he's going to be terrible. <laughs> Which I didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> and initially, in our first encounter with him and... Um, Lucy. Thank you. Mm-hmm. At the engagement party. And he's like, you know, I get it. I was an outsider, too. I come from new money. I can kind of relate to some of your issues. So initially. He's like, we're both oh, outcasts great. and victims. Yeah. Like, and then he no. says, your grandma's toast was so good. I was so mad. That toast was the worst. Yeah, her grandma would, like, 
to her grandma Lucy is her poor little china doll. She would dress mm. Lucy up in silks and brocades and parade her around. And I'm just like I was appalled. Yeah. And you're doing this as your in- your granddaughter's engagement party. As yeah. look how great she is. And there's a mention that like Lucy was almost in tears. Oh my god, she like, was Lucy in and tears. Her mother were like in tears about mm-hmm. it, and like mm-hmm. I don't know how her mother put up with those church hills. <laughs> She's a saint. Let's just, I mean, she really knew it was important to keep her kids close to their family and mm-hmm. wanted them to see that culture, too. I, yeah. She's a saint. <laughs> they were not kind to any of them. Um, nope. I also, yeah, and her grandmother would, like, try to fix her appearance and whatnot. And, like, oh, the, my her, gosh. like, speech lessons and, like, all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, on her, like, ugh, summer holidays and everybody thought she was off having a grand time. Nope, mm-hmm. she was being, like... Punished like, and tortured. Yeah. Yeah. And just... Ugh. Those church hills. <laughs> it's infuriating. Yes. Um, so we liked the moms yep. of George and Lucy and Freddie. Mm-hmm. We liked George, Lucy, and Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else was wretched. Yeah, everyone else can rot. Like... Even Charlotte. Oh, my gosh. I feel like this whole book was because of her and yeah. the things she's did at... Um, a lot of it is Charlotte. Um, yeah. I think that I, I think that George and Lucy could have been together much, much sooner without Charlotte. Yeah, probably. I think they were both <laughs> still, like, mortified on their own with, like, what happened, regardless of what Charlotte did, but Charlotte did not make mm-hmm. it any better. Mm-hmm. Okay, before we go into too many spoilers. Yep. Um, writing. What did you think of the, uh, the writing in this book? I thought it read easily enough. Um, mechanically, um, from, like, stuff I read online, it has the same, like, kind of, like, gossipy tone as Crazy Rich Asians, Mm. which I have not read. I have not either. Um, but it is very gossipy. It mentions a name brand. You can almost pick any page in this book and find, like, a high, a luxury brand name on it. (laughs) Oh my goodness. The amount of high fashion designer stuff. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because in the writing, he every time you'd meet a new character, you get their entire schooling background. I didn't mind that so much. I got annoyed after a while. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know why. (laughs) It is kind of, like, pretentious and there's even, like, footnotes about, like, when the characters are wrong or whatever. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. these are interesting. Um, Yeah. I mean, it was definitely all adding to the vanity and the mm -hmm. snobbery and this 1% class. Yeah. Which I got the point of it all. Yeah. <laughs> As a reader, though, I was kind of like, meh. <laughs> I just, don't need it. <laughs> you, they, like, they're super wealthy, and they aren't, like, aware, self-aware about it, and it, like, grates on your nerves after yeah. a while. But in some respects, they were self-aware of it, because they also, like, would dress, like, the the white rich people would go to their little... The wasps. Yes, would go to their, um, what are they, the clubs, and they would make sure they, like, downplayed their wealth, and they'd bring these old, like, beat-up cars, I mean, because they were trying to, what, be the common, I don't know. They knew to some extent, I feel like, because they planned that. That wasn't them trying to be relatable, though. It's, it's like a different kind of, it's still privilege that you can flaunt this and play dress up in. Yeah, I guess I just felt like they were self-aware of their attitudes, Oh, self-aware that they're being yeah, tools? Jerks, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was all I was getting. <laughs> okay. I was I'm... like, you're giving them too much credit. No, no, no. Not. Okay, No, no, it. I'm just saying they knew they yeah. were being like that. I got, I got there. <laughs> and their vanity. They know how vain <laughs> they are. <laughs> um, I didn't love the writing style because you have your omnipotent third-person narrator. Mm-hmm. And I... I um, like to really be in the characters' heads and feel all of it. And you did to some extent, but I felt like I wanted so much more of Lucy. And we would bebop around from other characters, and we'd have such a distance as the reader from the characters that I never really felt, like, really engaged, (laughs) I guess, with everyone. Um, So I would have preferred it more focused on Lucy and less about the others. (laughs) Yeah. But that's just a nitpicky thing. Um, The writing itself was really good. Mm -hmm. Um. It was a dense topic, but still oh, yeah. well mm-hmm. written and interesting, in, I guess, in that sense. It just, again, was not what I expected. If you're wondering <laughs> if these are, like, real things people hear, they are very real things people hear. Yeah. So, I, I don't think I... Believe I, I didn't miss that distance to having having Lucy mm-hmm. as, like, a limited third or a close third. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That space yeah. may have been nice. Or... 
or it just didn't feel like there was the space with mm-hmm. Lucy. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, I completely get it. I'm mm-hmm. very close to this character. That's fair. Yep. <laughs> um, I just didn't need to like to go with all the other characters to jump around into their heads, but we yeah. don't spend equal time in their heads either. No, it really is mostly her. Absolutely, mm-hmm. but like some of it, I was just like, meh. Or we get Cecil at times. I'm like, yeah, that was the one. I was, I was like, like, I don't need this. Like, I don't feel sorry for him. <laughs> that was exactly what I was trying to say without saying. <laughs> yeah, and I don't yeah. know why I wasn't saying that, but yes. Um, but backtracking to characters, we didn't talk about Auden. What did you think of him? I was kind of suspicious in the beginning because I'm like, oh, he's like this guru, and it's. I don't know. I'm like, mm, how appropriate is this going to be? Yeah. And also, he's kind of seems creepy mm-hmm. at first. But it's it gets... He's not creepy. I mean, he's like kind of eccentric, and you're just kind of like, okay, dude, do your juice cleanses, do your yep. whatever. Your puppy yoga. Um, Like, you're... He's not as bad as he could have been. I agree. I had that exact impression as well. Like, initially when you meet him, he's kind of an older guy, and he, like, singles Lucy out, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're getting a private session with this Mm. guy? And I was like, oh, Icky, run, run! (laughs) He's a life coach, by the way. That's maybe what we should mention. Yes. Um. Um, But it turns out fine. (laughs) Yeah. he's not a predator, and he's, he truly is just trying to help her out. Yeah. And Um, he, like, really supports, like, her painting, and it seems like this, like, focus on just Lucy is, like, very weird, but it's Apparently not weird, because these rich people just talk about art like this. Yeah. Well, and I, again, think he was a genuine character who was like, you need to go and pursue this. Yeah, he's and like, you need to, I'm like, enjoy your life. going to try to guide you in that direction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I ended up not hating him mm-hmm. either. Okay, he was okay. Yeah, he he's okay. Um, okay. What did you... Oh, what about Charlotte? We were... We, or should we talk about Charlotte? I kind of want have? to um, go in maybe into spoilers okay. with Charlotte because I wanted to talk about that one scene that I think really yeah. sets the whole book up. It sets the tone for Charlotte. Mm-hmm. So I think from here we should say spoilers. Spoilers. Um, spoilers. I think even not getting too far into the book, if you know, like just reading from the flap copy, you kind of know how it's going to end, I think. Um, and like we've said, it has, it has a, happy a happy ending. ending. Yeah, so it's not so much the surprise of like how it all how it works out it's more of like seeing lucy's journey to getting there Mm -hmm. yep yep so even if you listen to spoilers you don't have to but even if you do i think it'll be fine it would if you wanted to read it still then you could still get something out of it i agree it's not like a fantasy novel where you're like (laughs) oh my gosh this ending (laughs) (laughs) or any of the mysteries we've read so it's like who done it right (laughs) yeah i agree with that statement um okay so Charlotte, well, oh, spoilers. Yes, yeah, spoilers. Well, first <laughs> off, did you want to say anything about her before I talked about that? Um, that I found her insufferable even before yeah. we get into like how racist she is. She, I, I know, she really did set the tone too with the, oh, I'm a Lucy's cousin because I'm so and so's and so and so. I mean, she had to do the whole. Or like her mother's Chinese, her father's American, and it's like mm, mom is Chinese, mom is American too. She's from Oregon. Yeah. Thanks, cuz. And to do it every time. Every time. Mm-hmm. Every time. Well, I was just, just like, seriously, girl? It's just so othering, because they, like, mention how Lucy, like, has mixed features, but then she's only ever identified as Chinese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Charlotte was a tool as well. I mean, she kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. She's very judgmental. <laughs> she had one redeeming moment at the end where she was like, oh, I didn't mean to do that to you all of your life go be who you need to be but it was so minor that I don't know that it really made up for all the horribleness so anyway so the really thing that I I got upset about with Charlotte was that she basically shames Lucy not basically she does you don't have to mince that one full out shames Lucy and George about their um little dalliance in the cave um, and is like, oh my gosh, we have to stop this. Now you will never, ever, ever speak of this again because, yeah, because yeah, the drone is filming them and at the like, wedding. Make, she makes it seem like it's their fault when it's like, and that it, it was wasn't. A, and it, it wasn't their fault. It wasn't, okay, the filming was bad, but the rest of it wasn't bad. And she makes them feel bad about everything. She's like, you you only like George because oh. of your recessive genes. And I was just like, oh man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really feel like <laughs> so much 
it's, I feel like so much baggage, uh, additional, let's say additional baggage for Lucy started there because I don't think she would have went for Cecil if this moment hadn't no, happened. she doesn't. I mean, she, she may not have ended up with George, but I don't think she would have ended up with Cecil. She wouldn't have picked white bread mayonnaise Cecil. Yeah. <laughs> I just was so upset with Charlotte. Um, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Me and too. so yeah, and then we meet Cecil, who is just also insufferable in a totally different way with his name dropping, his fashion. I'm sorry. Can we please talk about the apartment? Yeah. I mean, he makes this apartment in what um, the village? Is that where they were in Green? In, in Manhattan? I don't know anything about New York. Okay. Well, anyway, um, in a, a in a rich part of New York, <laughs> but not like the rich. Manhattan. Yeah, You're in Manhattan, yeah. I think. Um, so anyway, he gets and remodels this apartment because so anyway, whoever his designers are, <laughs> but he puts a canal in the middle of the apartment so that the can have gondoliers escorting. I don't even know who's riding these boats. <laughs> and like, is it a full size canal? Right. Because like some of the canals in Venice aren't that big, but they don't. Those are not the and ones you're... typically had gondoliers on them. Yeah, and it's like in your living room. Yeah. And they're like, we're going to have them all the time here. And someone's like, oh, but when you have kids, that's so dangerous. They're like, that's why there's a gondolier. They're a lifeguard. And I'm like, yeah. what? I don't know. Like, as soon as we hit that, I was like, what? What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was after the engagement party, which was horrible with all her relatives. And then that, I'm like, what are you doing with him? And he was so possessive. Like, he just wanted a pretty little trophy to put on his mm-hmm. arm, stroll around, and have on his Instagram... Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was this was not a social media like pro social media thing. <laughs> or it's like if I ever like worry, I'm like, oh if like when store posts get likes and I'm like, Oh, am I getting too into this? And then I see how into it he is and I'm like, I'm fine. You're fine. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Every every moment had to be like put around his camera and and everything yeah. for social media. It was just crazy making mm-hmm. and all the, the name dropping. I had dinner with this princess and this sultan and this and that. Yeah. And see, my new money is just as good as your old money. That's his whole thing. That he's a he's like, he's like he has the wrong type of money for the social circles he wants to be in. And he's like, I'm so I'm such an outsider. Yeah. Oh, poor him. Oh, like poor you. Mm. <laughs> you had a rough time. You didn't get into that country club when you were eight. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> We have no hard feelings for him. No, we don't feel bad for Cecil. Mm-hmm. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. So his, his mom, I did. We don't get much of her, but we find out that she is half Hispanic. Yes. Yeah, she's Hispanic and she's Jewish, and that those were like barriers to her, mm-hmm. like make growing up and like yep. making her life. So I was like, okay, your mother has some rights. Yeah. Cecil does not. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my gosh. No. His whole big thing is like, oh, she doesn't look like the queen or royal that, or she wasn't born the queen or royal that she looks like now because his mother has done, like, (sighs) she dyes her hair consistently. She's done plastic surgery to her nose and her face. And it's just like, that's really sad that you can't, heartbreaking. love your features. Only that is a choice that people can do and they are perfectly allowed to decide what they want to do with their bodies as long as you're not doing it for somebody else yeah well and i guess even then it's your decision but still this it's, was, this it's all a whole felt thing wrong. it's a very it's a tangled up messy yeah. thing but yeah. this instance felt wrong because mm-hmm. it felt like she was doing it to not be ostracized yeah and you shouldn't have it's, to do it's that it's like adhering to western beauty standards and yes. like that's a problem right there yes <laughs> uh so yeah. I, I just wanted to say that. Like, Cecil's mom maybe is, like, not terrible, as terrible as... But she raised a terrible son. She did raise a terrible so son. So then that says something, too, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Because, let's face it, Lucy and George's moms were awesome. Cecil's an adult, and he's not very, a very good one. <laughs> and they had a weird relationship. George they and did. Rosemary have a fabulous relationship. It's not mm-hmm. weird. It's just very endearing. People make it seem weird. I never thought it was weird. <laughs> I didn't think it was, was adorable. either. Because I'm like, everyone's misconstruing them and not, yeah. and like, judging them. Yeah, so racially. much judgment. So, I mean, across the board, all characters in some mm. way. Except maybe yeah. George. He just doesn't talk a lot. Yeah, but I like, don't know. why doesn't he talk? He's so quiet. And I'm like, you guys Oh, and Freddie. Yeah. Freddie's good. Freddie's good. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know what else you want to talk about with this one. I, it, this obviously was not one that we totally loved. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was good. It had its moments. It had moments. Again, it wasn't the rom-com escape reading I think I had thought it should be mm. or would be, not should be. Um, it was just a lot a lot more intense than I initially thought. Not yeah. that you shouldn't read that. You just should yeah. be prepared for that. <laughs> yeah. I, like, going into it, like, I remember, like, when you first mentioned it, I was like, that's going to be some biracial angst right there. I'm like, this is going to be a thing. And we did talk about that. But yeah. we thought, eh, it should I was be like, okay. It should be okay. Like, but it wasn't so much angsty. It's just, like, painful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, was, there was a lot of insensitivity in this book. <laughs> and it's, like, it's not, yeah, and it's, like, not how it's framed. It's, like, we, like when you're reading it, you know it's, like, this is condemned in the book. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, in English class, they talk about, like, implied reader, and t- implied author, and, like, the values of the book that you get from the text. And it's, like, these are bad. This is bad. Mm-hmm. Um, this is racism. Mm-hmm. And it's looked down upon and destructive to the lives of its victims. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not fun reading all of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was a good read in, for me. Because mm-hmm. um, I don't obviously relate to that so I liked it for that because I always think a new perspective is a really good thing mm-hmm. and seeing all of that is a good thing to see yeah to it's see good to read outside is. your experience yeah. yeah and to realize how to grow from that mm-hmm. but again I wasn't prepared <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared either <laughs> so I think the book has value and I think there are great people who will really love reading this book just know yeah. that it's not a rom-com and yeah fine. <laughs> it's much more social commentary much most yes yes absolutely yeah. i did like lucy and george though they are good they are good apparently it's a retelling of a uh, room with a view mm. um which i haven't read so i haven't I read tell. that yet apparently either there's like a pianist in that one but in this one lucy's a painter i like that she was a painter um there's also kind of pride and prejudice vibes between it Especially yeah, I thought Pride and Prejudice. Especially, like, of how they misjudge each other, mm-hmm. like Lucy and George. I know, every, I loved every time she sees George, he makes such funny comments, and then I, I think she's talking herself out of liking him, honestly, in some ways, and yeah. then she'll be like, oh, I like when they were in yoga, and she was like, what is, that guy is getting every pose perfectly done. <laughs> <laughs> and then she turns around, and it's George. And she's, like, <laughs> she's like, oh, crap, it's George. <laughs> of course it's George. I should have known. He's perfect at everything he does. <laughs> like, some of her comments are also very sad. Like in the beginning, she thinks he's so so he's so strange, mm-hmm. um, and I'm like, oh girl, like it's, oof, what you, yeah, the stuff you've internalized, it's like already showing up now, and it's just like, oh, I hope you like, because he's very con like secure in mm-hmm. who he is. Like he was raised mostly in Hong Kong. He went to school in Australia for a few years, so he grows up very differently from Lucy, who yep. has grown up entirely in New York in the east in the Upper East Side, or. Hamptons. Where mm-hmm. the Hamptons are? I don't know. It's outside of New York. It's outside of New York okay. City. Yeah. It's yeah. like where they go to vacation on the yeah, beach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, you know, her mom made that decision, and she was hoping that was for the best to oh, give Oh, should we her... say, like, why? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because Lucy's dad died oh, yeah, when she never... was eight. Um, so her mother, like, make, wanted to make sure that they had a relationship with his side of the family. And, sh- and, like, felt like they got, um, like, or knew about their Chinese culture at home with her, but then mm-hmm. she wanted them to know her dad, their dad's side, yeah. too. So, like, trying to give them both. There's a word in Japanese for it that where it's, like, you're, bo- you're both things yeah. instead of, like, half of two things. Yep, she was trying to be mom, dad, and everything yeah. in between. Like, I feel for that. Yep. Yep, I mean, I don't, yeah. She did what she could. She tried, but it's mm-hmm. just like. But they were awful. They were so <laughs> terrible. I'm so glad Khaki has like a terrible name. She's one of like Claire and Anna Fred. <laughs> two of Lucy's cousins. They are wretched names for I don't wretched even know what characters. Khaki's real name was. I think he mentioned it. Catherine. Maybe, but it was Khaki. Yeah. I was like, she has the worst. I was like, why it's would you chick- choose that as a nickname? I agree. I was like, mm, okay. She's terrible. Yeah, so and the grandmother putting post-it notes on all of grandma's stuff yeah. to claim it. Oh man, she was, she was interesting. Interesting is <laughs> a very polite way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
I feel we've covered this book enough. Yep. Yeah, I think so. What are we reading next week? What are we reading next week? In the next two weeks. Oh, yes, two weeks. Oh, I should get the other one. Well, we're reading Vicious. Um, that's the old cover. The new cover's over there. <laughs> I like that you're going to give all options. All cover options. Well, this options. is what it looks like now, because the covers got redesigned. Yeah. Um, so Vicious is by Victoria, or V.E. Schwab, and it's kind of like your super villain origin story. Um, the premise is that these two college students, these two pre-med students, Eli and Victor, find out that near-death experiences can give you superpowers. Um, and then... Yeah. Yeah, it goes We're exactly... Excited. It goes exactly as well as you think prideful 19-year-old pre-med students would think it would go well not at victor frankenstein or anything um and what are we reading <laughs> after that and then after that <laughs> we are reading the sequel sort of a sequel to companion vicious like they can go you can read them as sequels but you can also read them as standalone novels because vicious didn't have a sequel for many years mm, like 10 oh maybe because this came out like 2011 what? didn't it it was a long time I was very happy. 2013. And then this one came out 2019. Okay. So not 10. Okay. (laughs) A while, but not that long. A while. I was happy a sequel came out. Yeah. So then it, like, I don't know what happens in this one. But um, I guess we, like, follow the characters from book one and see what they do. And they find more EOs, extraordinaries, as they are called in the book. I think it'll be fun. It will be fun. We're going back to our dark fantasy-esque because it's october we're gonna do spooky-ish yeah. things so um, we're starting with like villains and and i'm really impressed that we have went this long without reading a schwab i know we both adore her yeah. um so it is really funny that we've waited this long yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's all we got so anyway you should definitely tune in next week mm-hmm. we will be talking about vicious and yeah we'll see you all next we week we have copies you can oh yeah read. okay um, yeah push the books you can they read so quick and they are so they'll grab you very quickly and you just want to know what's gonna happen i think think. give us a call at mostly books we have them online as well and of course you can do uh libro fm -hmm. if you prefer an audiobook yeah all right that's it that's it bye